Hello and welcome back and today we want to talk about a brand new NAS, the TSH2490FU. Now this is by far the most powerful NAS I've ever talked about on this channel. Easily um, the fastest, easily one of the highest performing processors I've ever talked about in a device and of course this is for flash utilization. Flash is something I've talked about here on the channel quite a lot and for those that aren't aware Flash servers take a very similar logic to that of SSDs themselves and then blow it into a wholesale solution. Now, just before we go into the product, again, if you do know Flash, not forward a minute or so, but for those of you that don't, let me just quickly explain. Traditional hard drives and SSDs, obviously everyone knows, I think if you're watching this video, you more than likely know that an SSD is faster than a hard drive. And the reason an SSD is faster than a hard drive is because an SSD is made up of multiple cells and chips inside. It doesn't have any moving parts. Things are read um, almost near enough instantaneously in a way that with hard drives require an arm or an actuator to read multiple platters that are spinning disks inside that use magnetism to uh, constitute information, you know, zeros and ones. And in an SSD, it's used with electrical signals um, uh, with blanks and electrical signals representative of those zeros and ones. And there's more to it than that, but that's an incredible oversimplification. Now, an SSD is a PCB board, and it's covered in lots of cells known as NANs. These cells, uh, these are where all the information lives. You need a certain number of cells to constitute the capacity or the overall storage of a drive, and the quality of those NANs uh, does increase by their architecture. You've got single, double, triple, and now quadruple layer cells. And the more cells you've got, and the higher the cell uh, layers, the more capacity you've got. But unfortunately, that does give way to endurance problems and SSD NAND wearing away. So the more layers that they manage to get out of that NAND, the lower the endurance factor, and ultimately the lower the performance as well, long-term and short-term as well. But an SSD is about that. It's multiple NAND cells that are read by a controller, and which are then fed into an interface, generally SATA or SAS. Uh, so SATA at 6 gigabit per second output, and SAS at around 12, we get higher ones at 24 as well. And there's more as well on top of that. Now, what Flash is, is that logic that we just talked about with an SSD, but as I say, blown up. So instead of individual NAND, little cells of information, we have individual SSDs. Each one of those SSDs represents the NAND in a small SSD. Those SSDs, each of them, are high performing. And all of those are being controlled by a controller. In the case of a NAS, a CPU, and a memory, and a network controller, of course. And this controls the flow of data and the writing of data intelligently onto those individual SSDs in the same way uh, a standard SSD on its own will have a controller that controls all the data going onto the little NAND chips. Now, all of that data in the Flash server, incredibly useful and fast inside as it is, needs to be accessible in a speed which is, if not representative of, at least the same speed as the internal. So you need the external speed and the internal speeds to be as fast as possible. The reason is that as useful as it is to have all that fast information inside for rendering and data creation, if you're outputting that data and you want latency to be as low as possible, you need a great external user interface. Generally, we've seen a lot of dabbling with 10 GBE um, on uh, flash systems from both QNAP and Synology, but in this system, we have four 20 to 25 GBE ports. That means via link aggregation, such as it would be possible with the right switch, and you would need a modular switch as well, um, you can get up to 100 gigabit throughput on this device. But in the case of this device, you end up with a flash station with all those SSDs corresponding as NAND. You have a controller inside of CPU and memory, just like on an SSD. And whereas an SSD would use SATA at 6 gigabit per second or SAS at 12 gig and higher or with dual lane uh, SAS, you ne then have flash stations like this one that can give you 25, 50, 75 and 100 gigabit throughput. That is insane now that brings me back to this product thanks for staying so far the 2490 and i'm going to say fu on the end because it is on the model id but let's be frank every time i say that you're thinking the bad word and you shouldn't but 
The 2490 is their latest flash station solution. It utilizes NVMe SSDs, U2 SSDs to be precise. And NVMe is something that the rest of storage technology has just been trying to rein in like a mad horse. NVMe, NVMe SSDs have been going through the revisions. I think NVMe 1.3 at the moment, and uh, NVMe generally is going in U2 and U3 as well um, on the horizon. And the speeds promised by NVMe and are possible, and the latency and the handling and the intelligent internal data management as well is just breathtaking. And the rest of the data storage sector has kind of gone, uh, uh, I'll, yes, we can patch something together. But patching things together isn't enough. You need a solution that is designed to handle NVMe. And that's why we've not seen hardly any at all competent NVMe only solutions. This is kind of the first, and I would say it's definitely the first that I've ever talked about here on the channel. Now, it's a 24 bay solution. Each one of those bays utilizes a U2 NVMe drive. Now, that means that this is an NVMe drive that's kind of in a two and a half inch casing U2, and it's delivered via a, a, a SAS connection on the end there. And each one of those drives is NVMe. It is this incredible speed um, with each bay being PCIe Gen 3 times 4 NVMe uh, 1.3, you are getting tremendous throughput potential in a RAID configuration. You know, you're looking at drives like WD Gold, uh, the uh, the latest generation of NVMe WD Gold U2 drives. You're talking Ultrastar and that SN series. That is just incredible uh, speed. So, you, you know, that is a lot of throughput, which brings us back to the original issue of harnessing NVMe as a storage medium in particularly network attached storage, but even SAN or even DAS to a degree, having a system that can actually handle that data coming all the way through. And this is where we come into this system. So the 2490 arrives with a, an AMD CPU. It's the EPYC series, very, very new. It's the second gen, in fact. And there's two different variants of processor, a 12 core and a, oh no, sorry, 16 core and an eight core CPU, sorry. Um, the Obviously the uh, 16 core model is going to be the more expensive. This device arrives with a 3.0 gigahertz frequency per core that can be burst up to 3.3. And the eight core is 3.1 that can be burst up to 3.2. Now, obviously this processor is gonna give you all the things from a competent um, x86, uh, 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 what am I saying? Uh, what am I saying? X86, a 64-bit architecture chip. Sorry, got to stop my own thought there. But it's what this brings to the table in terms of throughput, because you're going to need that CPU to be able to handle this sheer amount of data. But it's more than that. Um, it also supports up to a staggering four terabytes of memory. It's got a uh, 16 memory slot. Um, I think DRIM or um, they are DDR4 ECC memory as well. So um, with one model, the base model, base, um, arriving with 64 gig of memory and 128 gig available with that 16 core CPU that we just talked about. Having that over um, 16 slots going all the way up to four terabytes of memory is going to be pivotal because flash station utilization requires a whole bunch of memory. Caching is key in flash you've got a huge amount of data and you've got processes like over provisioning um ssd trim and stuff like that working on a much larger scale in systems like this and then you have a system like the 2490 here that has zfs inside so you have inline um, deduplication inline compression so data is being compacted or extracted very very quickly um you know, in real time, you need incredible architecture to be able to do that. Now, why would you want to do the compression and the compaction and all this stuff? Why can't you just write to the NAND? Well, as I touched on earlier, flash station utilization in any regard, any kind of flash system from Synology or Cunip or anyone, um, a NAS system that has uh, NVMEs or SATA SSEs that are being written to constantly is going to have a durability problem. Um, SSDs, despite their incredible speeds, have a consistent problem with durability. They have a lifespan. 
and SSDs have generally a certain number of writes. If you go into the warranty of any device, um, uh, SSD, you will see that they generally say it will be five years on an SSD. And then there's a little caveat that they'll, they'll say, and also once it's achieved this much write. So it's designed to last five years, but if you are especially aggressive on your writes, it can be problematic. So the ways around this, uh, which QNAP have factored into the 2490 here. Uh, so first and foremost, the data deduplication, uh, compression, and basic, basic data management and writing will reduce the sheer amount of writing on the SSDs. They also have, and again, I'm looking off camera for my notes there, uh, QSAL, an intelligent internal management of data write on SSDs and lifespan, which is going to be crucial because you're gonna to need to know which SSDs are the ones you're gonna to need to swap out over time. Then you've got data write coalescing, um, which is when random writes are converted into, into sequential uh, data writes, which again, is a much more intelligent management of the uh, utilization of NAND within SSDs on a grandiose scale when you've got multiple SSDs inside the system. And then on top of that, you've got the benefits of ZFS that are brought to the table. Uh, benefits such as um, fast building, fast rebuilding, uh, resilvering, uh, done much, much, much quicker when you quicker when you need to reintroduce new SSDs into the system, and all of those benefits of um, compression and deduplication, and indeed data coalescing, the majority of them are visible via the storage manager, which will present you how much data is being saved, how much write is being saved, and ultimately how it's benefiting the end user. Now. We've talked about the CPU and the memory inside, beasts such as they are. We can talk about the externals a little bit, and we've already kind of touched on it, but the network interface ports, those four 25, gig, um, G, uh, 25 GBE connections on the rear there are pretty substantial. Even, I mean, they do utilize, obviously, a form of fiber. You're not gonna get copper in this shape or form to the same degree. That kind of technology is not really there yet in a viable form, but, it is still a fantastically fast connection available there on the rear, which again, you want a system to push that data so it's ready to go out into multiple locations. If you want to kind of dedicate 25G to each of your offsite places and cable it in, there's a couple of uh, 2.5 GB ports on there for localized access, which I mean, they're great, but who cares at this point? Um, uh, 25 GBE, four ports there. There are five PCIe slots. It is worth highlighting that two of those slots are occupied by uh, the 25 GBE um, cards that are inside. There's PCIe uh, four time, uh, Gen 4 times 4, uh, Gen 4 times 8, and Gen 4 times 16. Think about that. All of them, PCIe, Gen 4 times 4 times 8 and time 16 across those slots, an enormous amount of upgrade potential to add even bigger cards, 40 GBE dual uh, Melanex cards, that sort of thing. Um, it is a redundant power supply rack mount device, of course, it's got two PSUs there on the rear, 1,100 watts each, which is kind of essential on a system like this. It's got a huge internal cooling system, but it is just the sheer beefiness of it. it this is one of the first systems I've seen for a very long time, where I look at that and I look at the throughput of a 24 bay NVMe RAID system and then go, I think this can do it. One of the, when we've done any kind of performance test on this channel, generally you always find that the bottlenecks are your test machine not being powerful enough and the kind of machine you wrap around the storage media not being powerful enough. That is not present here. You've got a CPU that ranks well in excess of 16,000 on CPU benchmark. You have an enormous memory potential for all of that intelligent caching L1, L2, etc. And then on top of that, you have external ports that not only on the base model are substantially uh, more powerful than anything out there at the moment in terms of throughput and bandwidth, I mean, but on top of that, enormous upgradability. Uh, both internally and externally as well. Now, the big question, let's face it, is price. This ain't going to be no, you know, Black Friday sale job. This is going to be a specialist bit of kit. I mean, I will consider myself lucky if I get one here on the table. 
Uh, I may have to make a trip or a plane flight to get one of these for the channel. I am going to try to get uh, some footage of this uh, device, see if it can back up its claims in the future. I smell a flight to Taiwan in the future, who knows, but um, in terms of pricing, you are looking at five figures on a device like this. Notwithstanding, uh, you are paying for its potential and what it can do for a business, but you are paying just for the sheer hardware inside. And on top of that, the device has got five years of warranty and it is an enterprise level solution. Those are two elements on any solution which generally make the price a little bit more. But this has been the TSH2490FU. I told you I'd include the part number at least one more time. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed that. I've gone into more detail in the description there. Uh, at NAS Comparison, of course, there's a link to span.com if you are interested in finding out more and finding out if this is kind of a flash solution that's going to suit your business. So do go down there and find out more. If you have enjoyed this video, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe. And we have a lot more information coming up soon about flash systems and how they're slowly being integrated into the mainstream. Not in a big, big way, and certainly not in this NVMe monster right here that has an end user with a deep pocket and wild aspirations that I can't help but respect, but we are seeing a lot more flash entering, if not the prosumer market, then we're seeing a lot more SMB, or even slightly higher than that, uh, market considering flash solutions in SATA form. But we'll talk about more on another video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.